Welcome back. Today we're going to be doing something a little different, something pretty fun. I've got a brand new prototype chassis here from Mofo RC. So this is yet to be named, but I'm going to dub it the Flapjack to go along with his slow motion pancake motor, keep it breakfast themed. So this little chassis here, he designed around deadbolt rear links and C10 Jeep front links. So you can see those shock mount positions would require telescoping shocks to get all the way back to the deadbolt uh, rear link axle position. So rather than doing that, I'm going to use another new product from MoFORC, which is his aluminum trailing arms. And you can see the shock mounts there on the sides are offset. So that ought to allow stock link shocks to kind of sit in almost vertical position there. And then of course the front is going to use stock length to get out to the C10 Jeep fronts. And that's it. I mean, the kit is right there, pretty basic. You've got a roof, you've got an ESC tray, battery tray, and then optional servo lights. So another unique thing about this little chassis was it was designed around an 030 motor. So not a lot of space in there. So I picked up the new 030 Torque Beast from Mofo, which is a little slower with the stock pinion than the stock motor, but should be tons more torque. And then everything else you can see here is fairly stock. Um, I've got a lot of plastic here. I did pick up a black label servo. I did pick up an aluminum servo mount, aluminum steering links. I've got some hodgepodge aluminum links to make up my four link Jeep front. I've got black aluminum knuckles, basically just for a little more strength. So trying to keep it ultra light, plastic housings, plastic everything, um, or aluminum. So I've got a brass diff cover, a light one for the rear potentially. I've got a heavier brass diff cover you can see sitting on this plastic housing. Um, so a little bit of weight there, but what I wanna do is basically tune the weight with the wheels and tires. So I'm planning on either MoFo's DDP wheels or UPW wheels to go on this thing. Not sure what tires, what style, but I've got every option to choose from currently at my house. So I'm gonna pick something out that looks good on these when we get to that point. The other option you're not seeing here is a ESC or a receiver. And you can see this kind of long slot here on each side that's set up to basically be your on off switch for your stock controller. Uh, ESC receiver. So what I did was picked up a new V2 SCX24 and I'm going to yank that V2 system out of that, put it in this since it's got such good slow control for these brush motors. So I think that'll pair up really nicely with this, keep it still pretty stock um, as well with those electronics. So anyways, let's jump into this and see if we can't get something assembled here. All right, quick update. Rear axle went together without a hitch. Super easy. Got it uh, greased up, it's all free spinning. So now you can see I've got my front axle pieces laid out here. Um, just wanted to take a quick look at these uh, black aluminum knuckles. These are off of Amazon, pretty cheap. Um, bearings drop right in, so those look like they'll work great. And then this steering link set was off of Amazon as well. Um, no name, but I liked it because it kind of had a hybrid there, the round bar and the flat stock aluminum crossbar. So that's something you typically don't see. It's either one or the other. So that's my front axle. So let's get that assembled and then we'll see what's next. All right, quick update on this front axle. Ran into my first little hiccup here. You can see I shaved the plastic off of the ends of the axle uh, to get more of an extreme turning angle. And uh, one side would not turn as far as the other. And I kept taking the knuckle on and off looked at that inner o-ring and the drive cup and mind you these are stock axles and uh, finally i realized that one side the, the the troubled side wasn't seating on the bearing as far which is this uh, bottom one here and there's actually like a rib there at the end preventing that bearing from fully seating so the top one is how it should seat so that was just enough to cause one side to kind of contact the pin sooner and it you know it would kind of stop here rather than all the way so that alleviated it but just something super strange never seen that on a stock 
uh, axle, but it was so small I couldn't really show it without just putting a bearing on there. But that's that's kind of the comparison. That gap was just enough to screw it up. But everything is uh, functioning smooth now, so we're gonna get the steering links on and uh, get the servo on. Okay, a little bit of progress made. Completed that front axle, got the servo mounted, and I used the the forwardmost position on that best servo mount ever. You can see where that ended up putting my steering linkage, so it's nice and in line there. Got my uh, transmission assembled, got the motor meshed up and broken in. I went ahead and unboxed my S624 and grabbed the V2 out of it. So that's uh, done and ready to be assembled. So these are the parts uh, remaining. I forgot to mention drive shafts earlier, so I went ahead and grabbed some plastic drive shafts. And I've got these uh, shocks out. I don't think I really talked about these. These are oil emulsion shocks. They look like uh, hot racing knockoffs. Got these on Amazon, quite a bit cheaper. They uh, come with two springs here, and you can see the black ones are quite a bit longer. I thought those were the soft, but I believe those are stiffer than these silver. Because once you actually compress those to the length of the silver, then you compress them, they're pretty stiff. So you can see the Hot Racing has the very thin black for the soft spring and then the silver medium and the gold firm. So I've got several sets of these, so I'm going to grab, I think, the soft and uh, potentially mediums off of that. Uh, may try these silver uh, that they come with, but we'll see what ends up working. So not too much left here. I've got the uh, links out. These are my last uh, True RC links I've been stealing from this set ever since I bought it. And then I've got these uh, Mofo RCs to make up the front end, and then of course the trailing arms and just plastic deadbolt links. So I'm going to go ahead and get some oil in these shocks, and then I think we can start putting this chassis together. Well, that's looking a little different. So this chassis went together super easy. Um, little bit of uh, finagling to get my full um, up travel in the front here. So you can see I've got that shock pretty much laid back horizontal and the servo gets way up into this uh, chassis. So one thing I had to do a little different than on Nick's build of his prototype. He had a V1 ESC receiver turned with the uh, I guess the switch would be on the other side and the plugs were here so the plugs coming out blocked the up travel of the servo and you can also see the CSC is basically horizontal with the top of that chassis and the two bolts here are actually the tray at an angle so it's not sitting at an angle on that tray because again with the plugs coming out this way you've got the transmission there below it. So it had to sit up above that transmission housing. So what I did was I took this servo cord and kind of snaked it back and forth in this little zone under here under the ESC and it pinches it nicely there. So as of now, I don't have any tape in there holding it. It's just pinched in there. And then uh, this is the battery plug coming up. I just left out the two screws here to give a flip up access and then the undermount battery similar to the Warthog chassis. And then it just uh, snakes up through there. And so the rear with these trailing arms, the shocks max out basically when the diff cover hits the battery. So it looks like we may have a little, a little yet to go. Looks like all the way on this side. Um, and then of course you get, you get the full side travel, no problem. So the next step um, before we get into wheels and tires, let's throw this guy on the scale and just see with the battery in, with no wheels and tires, what the four corner weight is and then kind of know what we need to uh, weight the wheels as far as to kind of push it towards that 60-40. So, so far, super happy with this. Um, 
These trailing arms are super cool. Just loving this thing. Um, now when I did the hot racing soft springs up front and these are the softer of the ones that came with these no name. Um, so they're providing a little bit of uh, lift. Whereas these, these give you a little bit, but of course they're at more of an angle. So right there, they're not gonna support as, as much as these. So um, we'll just see how that sits when we get some wheels and tires on there. But sweet so far. So let's get the scales out. Well, look at that. This is coming in pretty good right off the bat. So we're sitting at a really good front ratio, 57%. And then uh, almost 197 grams overall. Not too bad with a 50-50 cross weight. Um, and this does have the battery in there. Let's flip over to ounces for a quick reference. Seven ounces, nice and even. So this is coming in just under a stock SCX24 deadbolt, I believe, with a battery in it. So I've got one here, so let's toss that on there real quick for comparison. So coming in one ounce heavier with the battery and not near as good of a front ratio at only 54%. So good to know um, this chassis is at a great start point uh, right off the bat. So I think the next thing we're gonna do is jump into wheels and tires and see about uh, getting something that looks good and tuning this a little further. All right, here we are. Before you get too excited, these are just mock-up wheels and tires. So I already had these Baja Pro X's mounted up to some UPWs with plus six brass hubs. So you can see those brass hubs give me a pretty good uh, offset. And really what I want to do is get an idea of tire height that I could run and what offset I would need. So these UPWs, they basically have equal halve rims. So with these plus sixes and this tire height, I'm feeling the shocks. Um, so let's see it full kind of twist here and full lock. So I'm still clearing. I could always put a pan head screw in place of that uh, shock screw to get a little more clearance at full compression. But I think I'm about at the maximum tire height for the UPWs, you know, because you can't go any further out than the plus six hub. So not necessarily a problem. I've got multiple different tires to try. I've got an idea of what I want to use and I think I'm going to go with uh, some super DDPs. And so with those wheels, they have a different offset uh, face. So one face is deep, one face is shallow. So that will give me more offset in addition to the plus six. So I could run larger tires that way or I could stick with something in this range. So let's, let's take a look. Okay, now we're talking. That is sick. So we've got definitely the four tire plus articulation maxing out a little bit above the four tire plus measurement. But uh, front has the super DDPs. So the super deep dish outer face. And I installed the brass rings internally to give them more front weight. And let's take a look here at the offset. You can see I did the plus six here, and then I did a plus three here. And it looks like the plus three is sitting about like a plus six on a uh, UPW or a, if that was a regular DDP. Since this uh, hub is offset inward, I can use a plus three and achieve the same effect. This uh, plus six you can see is sticking out, I guess, three millimeters from the wheel versus this back one. So this is definitely out further. So let's uh, check the clearance. So a lot more, a lot more clearance there. Um, and these are about, I wanna say the same size as the Baja Pro Axes, a little bit taller even. And I've stuffed in uncut Crawler Innovation soft foams in the front. And these were forced vent 
They both had holes in them already, or had a hole, so not that I'm upset about that. They feel really good with those Crawler Innovations foams, and it definitely has them kind of bulging out, fills them out very nicely, and I really like that deep dish. So I may be able to uh, back off <clears throat> at plus six if I go with these rims and stay with the plus three. That basically puts me right back uh, kind of where I was, tucks this in, gives me a little bit better steering because I'm not so wide with the steering scrub. And it looks like I'll still need to swap that piece of hardware. But uh, that may be the way right there. So I think I'm going to mount up a couple more and I may swap in brass hubs on the front and then just do all aluminum on the rear and check the weight that way, but uh, I'm liking where this is going. Stay tuned. I thought before we jump into the chassis weigh-in, be a good time to look at the front and rear wheel assemblies individually. So you can see on the left, we've got the uh, brass internal ring and the brass plus three hub at 46.7. And then the right is the all aluminum build at 29.3, which is fairly hefty. A lot of the aluminum rims with the brass rings are sitting, you know, less than 30. That's one of them. So that's 22.1 grams with the brass ring. And then uh, let's put a tire to be fair. So that's at 33 grams right there. So just barely heavier than an all aluminum build. So obviously I think these aluminum, solid aluminum hubs add some heft, but uh, you know, building an aluminum wheel gets you quite a bit of weight and then you can add some brass to it, which we did on the left, and it really bumps you up. So I think it's time to mount these up and uh, see where we ended up on the chassis weight. Well, look at that. Gotta say, I'm pretty happy with that outcome. So we didn't hit the 60-40, but about as close as you can get without hitting it and going over. Straight 50-50, side to side. So wow, 349 total. So let's flip over to ounces. 12.4 ounces. So not, not a super light, but not a super heavy either. So I guess the, uh, the real comparison would probably be to this uh, Warthog chassis here. So let's swap it on. So that one's even got a plus bias and that has no battery in it. So that's unfair. I should get a battery in it. Okay. Got the battery in this. So now it's apples to apples and look at that. These are almost identical. So 59.41 as well. 50.50, 348.3. So let's flip over to ounces, 12.3 ounces. These are almost identical. Um, as far as weight and ratio. Well, you knew I was going to do it. I mounted up another set of tires because why not? I've got wheels, I've got tires. So let's get some alternates set up for this. So you can see I've got four here. I've got the original two at the top and I've got two new ones at the bottom. So we're going to throw them on here and uh, see what we came up with weight wise. So the brass fronts are going to be on the left. The new wheels at the bottom. So we jumped up a little bit in weight on both of those. So hopefully we held our percentage. Um, I built these as island style UPWs. So the fronts have the brass spacer the aluminum island style ring and a brass plus six hub. And then the rears have aluminum plus six, aluminum spacers, and aluminum rings. So didn't use any of the brass rings because I didn't want a 70 gram wheel. This is already, you know, heavy at 52.5. 
And then you can see I've got my original width UPW aluminum rings there, spares. So let's get these pulled off and I'll mount up that new set and we'll take a close look and I'll show you what I chose. All right, look at that. These are super sick. Stretched out those tires with some crawler innovations, uncut foams. So those are stretched super wide on these UPWs with the island spacers. And then I went with the black on black with black hardware theme and just a simple, uh, just kind of a little, little shallow tooth on that inside edge of the ring. But uh, I love that look, very apocalyptic. Just added to this kind of full blacked out theme and to further that, I went ahead and murdered out the ESC with some black tape. I've got some nice little uh, masking tape that works really well. So that just totally masks that down. That looks really good. So I'm really digging this stance, really liking this alternate set. These are Injura Crawler Master All-Terrain MTs. So these are about the same size as these ATs, but uh, I thought they'd be a good comparable tire. Um, they're stretched a little bit wider due to the island style, but height wise, you can see there, they're about the same. And I love that ring. It gives it kind of a, a small rim look, makes the tire look a lot bigger. But I uh, also really love these deep dish. So I think now we've got two good sets of uh, weighted rims with a forward bias. So let's get the second set on the scales and see where it ended up. Okay, here we are with the alternates mounted up. Look at that, nice 50-50 cross weight. We did drop a percentage uh, off the front. We were at 59.41, so that's not as good, uh, but we did gain some weight overall. So 349, I believe is what we were. So now we're up to almost 383, so about 34 grams total increase there and almost the same uh, front to back ratio but I could always add um, some hex weights like this because we're just running the plastic hexes and that does it right there, 60-40. So just a little bit of additional tuning weight gets you there. So I may throw those on. Um, I may run it without them and just see if I need them. From most of my rigs, um, even the ones I've had at 60-40, I've backed them off just a little because they were a little too forward heavy coming downhill, but uh, you don't really know until you get it out and drive it. So overall, I think this is a good starting point. I think both of these uh, sets of wheels and tires are going to work well as far as uh, the weight ratio. So we'll just have to see how the tires actually work. Just a quick shot here of uh, the island style ring versus the little hex weight that I can add to get to 6040. So 10 grams for the hex weight versus 26 grams. So that's why I didn't use those brass rings because they would have actually pushed me to probably a 61, 62% forward bias. So a little too much. So anyways, it's always nice to have options. I've got, you know, thinner versions. That's a six, 6.3, 6 6.4.5. How about that? Let's just settle in. So it's always nice to have some different, uh, little tweaking options. Um, and I guess I've also got just a regular brass hex, so very light little bits you can add. So anyways, wow, I could not be happier with this thing. It just looks super sick. Both sets of these rims look awesome. I mean, this thing is going to be right at home with my Mad Max builds. And uh, getting this blue blacked out really, really helped the overall look of it. A um, couple of other tweaks I did, I ended up, uh, I guess this is the top edge of the tray where this screw hits, and that's about the only point that this makes contact with the uh, ESC. So I put a, a little thin strip of double-sided there, so this is actually stuck down as well as kind of fit uh, between the rails, and then of course added that. And then one other little tweak I made was I was able to get the battery seated a little further forward and that allowed me to get um, the full stroke compression 
get me up just a little bit further before the links hit the battery, so that helped. So a couple of little minor tweaks there, but this thing is going to be awesome. Just going to be a flex beast. So these these three tires are about the size of four stock tires. So just a, a good reference right there. So I think what everybody probably wants to see is a little uh, just side by side. And this is the most appropriate vehicle. These are very similar. Um, and they've got some similar kind of issues as well. They both kind of run into the shock uh, being laid down, getting into the tire. And I kind of, I was successful on this build. I was not on this one, as you can see there. But I do have very wide tires on this, um, but I've had to really turn the steering down because it hits that shock really quick because that shock is laid down horizontal. Um, and then the rear I did different. So this is telescoping to deadbolt rears. And this is set up to do that as well, but I end up doing the trailing arms with uh, normal length shocks. So what that did was really allow me to get a little taller ride height and actually some usage out of the shocks. Whereas this guy just sits flat. Um, the shocks don't do anything. They're just other link points really. Um, so the problem with this one is the belly catches up on everything because it's so low. Um, so I think I'm gonna have to go to thinner, taller tires to raise this thing up a little bit. Um, this is also stretched with a Jeep C10 uh, rear at the front. So it is quite a bit longer. This one is a Jeep C10 front and a deadbolt rear. So it's a little stretch, but if we line these up, kind of rear axle, you can see this tire is poking out. Probably not a good uh, shot. Let me get the longer one in front. Yeah, you can see there how much longer that wheelbase is. So I think this one is actually gonna be a better performer um, right out of the gate because of that difference in length and a little bit of belly height. So can't wait to get this out and try it. I think both of these uh, sets of tires are gonna be great. I'm hoping this combo is not too heavy for that 030 motor, um, but it's very torquey. So speaking of that, why don't I get a battery plugged in and uh, turn this on and we'll do a little speed test with that torque beast. Okay, got the battery plugged up. Time for a little speed test. So this is uh, Mofo RC's 030 version three torque beast with an 11 tooth pinion. So definitely not going to win any races with this motor. It's uh, slower than the stock motor, and this is the stock 11 tooth pinion. So, but it's not called Speed Beast; it's called Torque Beast. So I think that's really where this is going to shine. So let's take a look at the slow crawl with these V2 electronics. Just super smooth, almost silent. Look at that. Look at that. Fury Tech, eat your heart out. Man, so very glad I went and bought another SCX24 and robbed the V2 electronics out of that. Just fits so well uh, the way he designed these slots and it's nice there on both sides so you can flip it like I did and choose how you want to install it. Um, I just think this is such a cool chassis design. I think Nick's Got very organic designs overall. Um, just cannot wait to get this out and actually test it. So I'm definitely going to give Nick some feedback on the build. Um, I know at least one other person that is building one of these right now. So this may not be the exact production version and I have no idea a timeline. But uh, all I know is I want to get this out and test it. Man, it is just super, super cool. So. Anyways, thanks for coming along on this build. Um, hopefully you learned something, maybe you did. And uh, as always, thanks for watching.